In this video, the primary file that we're going to be concerned with is the template.php file. Let's get started with a brief recap of the three steps to theming and where template.php fits in. The three steps to theming that we've already covered in the previous video involve the first step, which is template files, tpl.php files, such as node.tpl.php and page.tpl.php, replacing tpl.php variables, and theme function overriding plus our zero step of in info files, which are so simple they don't even count. And we've covered steps zero and one in the previous video. Inside of our theme directory, we've got files such as info files, tpl.php files, and the template.php file that map nicely to our three steps to theming. Like I said, this video will be concerned primarily with template.php, where we cover steps two and three of the theming process. Template.php is a file that is all PHP code, very unlike the tpl.php files that we were looking at previously. It's a great place for putting extensive logic, uh, so lots of loops and if statements uh, and all kinds of code, or basic SQL queries for pulling in additional data that might not be available to you. The advantage of this is it keeps your tpl.php files clean and reserved specifically for markup. The template.php file can provide variables to your tpl.php files to keep it so that all the logic is in this one file and then you just simply pass simple variables to your tpl.php files that they can print out. It is also useful for theming very small parts of the page that contain a large amount of logic such as when printing out the user's name, it contains a huge amount of logic to determine how that name should be displayed, but then only prints out a single line of HTML. Replacing tpl.php files, let's go ahead and get started right into the step two of the theming process. Generally speaking, when you want to provide a variable to a tpl.php file, it's a really easy process. You simply need to make a new function in your template.php file with the name of your theme prefixed on the name of the function and then underscore preprocess. This function then takes two arguments, vars, and the name of the hook that's going to be called. For example, this could be in the Garland theme, the default theme that's included with Drupal, Garland preprocess, and then an array of vars that come in, variables, uh, and then the name of the hook that's going to be called. Generally speaking, the name of the hook is also going to be the name of the tpl.php file that's getting called, such as this particular example would affect page tpl.php and create a new variable called my new variable and give it some value as its value when it's printed out. An alternative to this approach, you could also do the name of your theme underscore preprocess, the name of the hook to be called. And this is just a shorthand way of breaking up that single large function into many smaller functions. So you could have garland underscore preprocess page, and it would have the exact same effect as the garland preprocess function above, without the if statement in the middle of the function. This does the exact same thing of setting up a variable specifically for page tpl.php that contains some value as its value. If these functions look confusing to you, don't worry just yet because we have a basic introduction to PHP for themers later in the video. Moving on, we can look at theme function overriding, and this is the third step out of three for the theming process. Theme function overriding is very similar to overriding tpl.php files, only it's in code instead of individual files. The first thing you need to do is open up the module file where the theme function originally exists, and find the function you want to override such as theme username in user module. You find the theme function, you copy it into your clipboard, and then paste it into template.php within your theme. Then you simply rename the function from theme underscore to the name of your theme underscore as the prefix. So if you're copying theme username from user module and pasting it into the Garland theme, 
you would rename it to garland underscore username. And then you would clear the Drupal cache from the administration section. Now your function will be called instead of the default. Theme functions work because Drupal never calls the theme functions directly. For example, theme username is never called directly such as this, nor is the garland derivative called ever directly like this. Instead, a special function called theme is used as a pass-through, where you pass in the name of the theme function you want to call into the function to actually pull the theme system online. So this function actually goes through a loop and finds which function is actually needed to be called. When a theme function is called, Drupal will look through the list of available functions and call the one that's most specific to your site. If your theme is overridden some output, then it will call that function first that's located in your theme's template.php file. If that particular function doesn't exist, then Drupal will look for something in the theme engine layer, which usually is the PHP template engine. Finally, if that function doesn't exist, then it will call the theme function provided by the module, which usually is provided directly in the module file. This list of available functions is the reason why we have the theme pass-through function and why theme functions are never ever called directly, because the theme pass-through function allows us to go through this list and call the one most specific to our site. So in general, there are two possible ways to output content to Drupal, theme functions and template files. This is the difference between the two of them and when Drupal will use one or the other. The tpl.php files that we looked at in the first video are almost always specifically from markup. They contain almost all HTML and small bits of PHP. Theme functions, on the other hand, are the other way around. They live in template.php and they're specifically for PHP heavy code where only a small amount of markup is output. Whenever possible, modules should be providing tpl.php files to make it easier on the themer to do their job. And if complex logic is needed inside of the tpl.php file, usually this logic will be distilled into a single variable and passed along to the tpl.php file so the themer just simply has to print out the output. And that concludes our introduction to the template.php file, where you can override the variables that are passed to tpl.php files, and you can override theme functions that provide smaller bits of data that are printed to the page. Over the course of this video, we'll be looking at some examples that will help clarify what we've covered here already.